Good job. Praise the Lord. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. We're back on our Bible study on Bible promises. Bible promises. And, you know, we, we think about it. Uh, there has been said that there are 30,000 promises in the Bible. And you begin to think about that. There's about 30,000 Bible verses, 30,000 verses in the Bible, 23,000 in the Old Testament, and right at 8,000 in the New Testament. And then remember me telling you about uh, a man in the 1950s, 1956, he uh, read through the Bible for his 27th time, and he began to try to count every specific Bible promises. He had 7,487 promises to, by God to man, and he got through there, and he found that there were about 8,810 promises. It seemed like, and by the way, I just read a Bible commentary last week that professed to say 30,000 Bible promises. It seems like they got that because somebody said that every uh, verse in the Bible is a promise. Now, I would say yes uh, to that. Of course, every verse in the Bible is a promise without a shadow of a doubt, uh, but specific promises a little over 8,000 specific promises. There's promises about Jesus coming. Uh, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. You did good, Big John. I appreciate that. But we have promises all throughout the scriptures. This happens to be one of the promises that I go to, I believe, more often than any other Bible promise. And uh, often in my life, I don't know what to do. Uh, I don't know what God's desire is for me. Or I meet somebody and they say, Pastor, what should I do? And I'll say, I don't know, but I know one who does. And uh, sometimes I feel um, not lost, spiritually speaking, but I just don't know what God wants or what his will is in a certain aspect. And I'm confused. And have you ever been that way? Have you ever faced a big decision, didn't know what to do? Uh, Have you ever just been at a major crossroads in your life and wondered which direction to go? Uh, And there's a promise here in Proverbs chapter 3 that is a promise of God's guidance. And it is a wonderful promise in the Bible. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Let's read these two verses together. Ready? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Trust, no, stop right there. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. I mean, we've heard that before. Trusting God's very important. Believing in God is, that's important. Having faith, without faith it is impossible to please him. Right? But the second part, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge. In all thy ways, all thy ways. Not some of your ways, but all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he might direct thy paths. Well, he shall. That's a promise. Well, you don't know what to do if you begin to acknowledge him. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. He promises to direct your path. Well, that, that is an awesome, awesome Bible promise right there because sometimes I don't know what to do. But then I just bow my head and I say, Lord, I really don't know what you want me to do. I haven't got it all figured out. Uh, I'm open to your will. I'm open to doing exactly what you want me to do. And I'm acknowledging you, Lord, and I'm asking you to please to direct my path. And what a glorious Bible promise. And it's interesting. You get a couple of days, a couple of weeks, sometimes a couple years later, and you look back and you see exactly how God honored that promise. And he directed you and guided you and led you to his perfect will. What a glorious promise, the promise of God's guidance. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we do love you. And uh, this is a mountaintop of scriptures, Lord. It's a promise that I'm directed to weekly, a lot of times daily, Lord. And uh, often I don't know what to do. Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know where to turn, Lord. And what I do is in faith, I go to you, I trust you, and I bow my head and I ask for uh, you to direct my path. And I look back and you always have, Lord. It's a promise that has never failed me, Lord. 
and what a glorious promise it is to the people of this church, and it's a glorious promise that you've given to all of us. And Lord, this is important. It might be preventative maintenance in some ways, or a, a promise that we need to hide in our hearts, because in truth, all of us have those days and those times when we don't know what to do, but we need your direction and help. Help us all to get to that point where we stop and we immediately go to a prayer and ask you to help, Lord. Please bless us with this prayer of promise or this promise of guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. The Bible's full of exceeding. They're not just great, but they exceed great. Uh, they're wonderful promises, exceeding great and precious promises. The promises of God's guidance. Have you ever been lost? Amen. We admit it. Some of us don't like to admit being lost. Uh, need guidance and direction. I remember when Mandy and I, several years ago, we went to uh, Jerusalem and Israel, and our tour, tour went up to Bethlehem. And Bethlehem is uh, another side of Israel that is under the Palestinian Authority. And in Bethlehem, we were with the group, and we went into this church building, and supposedly down in the den of the church is where Jesus was born. And we came in there, we grouped, we gathered around there, and I went to the back of the cubby hole, and there was this uh, silver star right there, and we watched person after person. They'd stop down, and they would worship that silver star almost like an idol. They would kiss it. And I was amazed at how we could take a place and begin to worship a place rather than the creator right. and I watched that and I was uh, sort of sickened in my heart and Mandy and I were sitting there watching that and then my group began to leave and they were it was about 50 of us and they left on out of there and I held Mandy back for a while because I wanted to watch this just for a couple of more minutes and about two or three minutes later uh, we began to walk out and we went up these steps and we got to this place where's our group <laughs> And have you ever had that panic? Uh, you don't know where you're at or where you're going. And I begin to look over here, and I begin to look over there, and I, I was trying to calm Mandy down. Don't worry, honey, I got this. <laughs> and she gave me that doubtful look, you know. And, and you think about that, that feeling of lost. And uh, all, all of a sudden, in that part of the town, they have the Islamic call to prayer. And the Islamic call to prayer began to cry out right there. And uh, next thing you know, I began to get dark there. And I said, honey, follow me. And uh, we ended up going back to the bus station. And the group ended up uh, diligently looking for us. And uh, the problem was, as we left the place where we were, we're back over there, it was a whole mess. But I was lost, the uneasiness right there. Have you ever been lost and needed God's guidance? Um, maybe at a major crossroad in your life. Uh, maybe you have a challenging child, maybe 11 of them, <laughs> maybe, just maybe. Are you facing a big decision and don't know uh, the right way to choose? The Bible gives us promises of God's guidance. And I just want to read those verses. If you'll look there, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. I want to say those together three times. I want to get these in our brain. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. By the way, we're going to say it again, but when we get to that shall, emphasize shall uh, direct thy path. So let's do this again. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. One more time. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. The promise of God's guidance right there, he promises if we acknowledge him. That's important. When you get to that uh, road uh, where you're making a big decision or don't know what to do, I want to encourage all of us, the first thing you do is stop and acknowledge him. Say, Lord, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. God, you created all things. God, you control the moon, you control the wind, you control the sea. You even have control over the kings of the earth. And Lord, this decision, this uh, decision, I want to I please you. I want to uh, please you in all that I do. And I acknowledge you, Lord. I trust you. I believe in you. I have faith in you. Lord, I ask you to direct my path. 
By the way, you get up from that prey, be willing to do what he wants you to do. Amen. Be willing to go where he wants you to go. Whatever it is, when you do that, Wow, you'll be able to look in a few days, a few months, a few years later, you'll be able to see, wow, look what the Lord's done. His will is better than my will. His will, His way is better than my way. By the way, don't, don't, don't just hold that promise yourself, but I want to encourage you to share that promise. Amen. Somebody comes up to you and says, hey, I need some help. Yeah, what is it? I'm really struggling. I, I, I don't know what to do. I, I'm going through this right now. And introduce that person to someone who does know what's going on. Say, let me share a Bible verse with you in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says right here, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he, now emphasize that, shall direct thy path. And what you do is you share that promise, and who gets the glory God does? Amen. Who gets his, he gets the glory, because he does work things out. He does guide you. Boy, not even a few days ago, a dear lady uh, came up to me and said, Pastor, I just don't see how this is going to work out. I don't see how it's going to work out. And I said, well, listen, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge. I said, if you acknowledge him, he's going to work it all out for you. Earlier today, I got a phone call from that dear lady. She said, I've been praising God all morning because he opened that door and showed me exactly what he wanted. And it's wonderful. By the way, it is wonderful. His will is wonderful. The promise of God's guidance if we acknowledge him. By the way, there's several more things going into this, and we're going to talk about God's guidance. I'm interested in God's guidance, aren't you? Uh, turn over to uh, Psalms chapter 23. And uh, I'm going to read this. Hopefully you hear Psalm chapter 23. Uh, you have a little bit of an idea what's going on right here. Uh, it's the shepherd psalm. A uh, very famous psalm in the Bible, probably the most famous psalm in the Word of God, most known. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now look at this. He leadeth me. Do you see those three words? He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And I, I look at this, God's guidance. Imagine that sheep following the shepherd. Boy, all is good. Uh, that sheep is well taken care of when he stays close to the shepherd, right? And I'm getting here to this point. God's guidance comes by staying close to the shepherd. Amen. Uh, his guidance. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. He leads you to those green pastures. He leads you beside the still waters. He leadeth you in the paths of righteousness. He can lead you down that valley. And by the way, that valley of the shadow of death. Uh, this doesn't look good, but it's good. It's okay because his rod and his staff, when you're staying close to the shepherd, he takes care of all of your problems, all of your issues. Hey, and that wonderful promise of God's guidance is there to you if you stay close to the shepherd. Yes, stay close to the shepherd. Oh, last summer we went on a trip to uh, New York. We uh, got a house right by a little lake, and uh, we got, uh, I think it was Mandy... Me, Anna Joy, uh, maybe Dan Dan, maybe not. I don't remember if Dan Dan was at that time, but uh, Sam, Josh, no, 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 no. So we, we got on there, Sam Sam, just no Sam Sam, and we're fishing and going along these woods, and I begin to talk about bears. And Sam Sam, I don't know where Sam, you remember the bears? I said, Man, Sam Sam, we can go bear hunting. And it sounded exciting. And there was this log that had fallen off into the lake, and I told Sam, I'm going to take you out on this log. We're going to go bear hunting. And as we were getting off of this log, he was following me very closely. Very, I mean, like very, like clawing me, like he was the bear, holding on to me. And as we're walking on this, uh, this uh, log right there, going out bear hunting, all of a sudden he took a misstep and he went Doop! and fell into the water pretty bad. Yes, sir. But he was close to me. He was in the water for less than a second because I went whoop, 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 like this, like that. I was going to take care of him. 
after I dropped them. <laughs> right? And, and the thing is, is praise God he stayed close. If he would have ran ahead without me, got lost, would have fallen into some pit, I couldn't have helped him much. And the point for us is we've got to stay close to the shepherd. Hey, stay close to the Lord. You know when your heart drifts from the Lord. You know that? You ever been there? I mean, you know you, know you have something between you and the Savior. And it's miserable. That's not the place to be. Boy, get close to the Lord. Confess your sins and he is faithful and just to forgive us of sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Go to him and say, Lord, I have an open heart. Whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do. Boy, you pray to the Lord. You talk to the Lord. You read the word of God. You are not quenching the spirit, but you're uh, being filled full of the spirit. And when you stay close to them, he will guide you. And that's important. God's guidance comes by staying close to the shepherd. Now, I thought about this. This is a, a whole other side to it. The guidance of wisdom. Now, we, we know these verses, but James chapter 1, go there. Well, maybe we don't know these verses. We need to know these verses. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And not to get ahead of myself, but if he's going to direct your paths, I need wisdom. Amen. Wisdom. You know, knowledge, what is knowledge? Knowledge is the accumulation of facts. One plus one is three. Amen. That, that's a fact to my children. Maybe not to you. I mean, they're not as time homeschooled. And so, uh, but uh, facts. One plus one is two. Of course, one plus one is two. I was just making sure everybody had passed math. Okay, we got that. Knowledge is the accumulation of facts. Wisdom is using your knowledge in the fear of the Lord. Wisdom is taking those facts and using them to please him, please God. That, that's an awesome truth right there. You could be full of knowledge. By the way, you could be full of Bible knowledge, but you're not wise. That's right. That's right. You can have a lot of facts in your brain, but not be very wise because you're not using those, those facts in the fear of the Lord. And wisdom is those facts right there used in the fear of the Lord. James chapter 1, verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, yes, sir. lack wisdom. Have you ever lacked wisdom? Amen. Oh, we all have. Only three of us. Real quick, how many have lacked wisdom before? We all have. Some of you are still not there. Uh, one more time, okay? I just want to make sure, if you're a Netasheim kid, make sure you raise your hand here, okay? Uh, how many have lacked wisdom before? We all have right there. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Remember, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust the Lord. Let him ask in faith. It's very similar to that. It's all uh, put together like that. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Meditate on that. Boy, you, you, you lack wisdom and you sort of say, God, I'll do your will if it's what I want. Well, a double-minded man's unstable in all his ways. And it's so important. Be willing to uh, follow that wisdom. You ask God for wisdom, boy, be willing to follow what God wants you to do. It's using your knowledge and the fear of the Lord. James Proverbs chapter 1. Turn there. Look at this. I want to just say wisdom, that guidance is available for you. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That wisdom is available to you. Proverbs chapter 1, sort of lengthy, but... I love it. Verse number 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her word saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you, because I have called and ye refused. I stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. In other words, we have wisdom up on the, the hill of the, or on the top of the, the city walls right there. And yeah, I preached this before, we've seen this, but, but people are passing by. And it's like they don't even see that that guidance, that wisdom is there. Amen? Amen. God's wisdom, God's guidance is available to them. And they pass by, no man regarded it. Hello, he stretched forth his hand, but no man regarded it. 
And that's important. Wisdom is available to you. God's guidance is available to me. It's God's guidance is available to you. But it's important for us to be willing and desiring it, wanting it. Boy, you might, may not even understand. You need God's guidance. We live in a world full of landmines, you might say. You imagine, la da da. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Done. Over. Out. But God will guide you around the landmines. He'll gu gu guide you around those terrible situations. Uh, he'll guide you around. Remember, Satan uh, waits as, as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And God's wisdom will help you and I. And if you look a little bit later, uh, verse 29, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own wine and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Whosoever will be down here, that wisdom has his hand out there, and all of a sudden will turn, acknowledge that wisdom, reach out their hand, and begin to pull up towards that wisdom right there. It's available to you. Oh, right there shall be quiet from the, uh, shall be, how did, how did it word right there? Shall dwell safely and shall be quiet uh, from fear of evil, e evil. I need wisdom. Please, Lord, by the way. I need, I need wisdom. Yes. I desperately need it, but it's available to me. Praise the Lord. 11 kids, I need wisdom. Pastor of this church, I need wisdom. Amen. Member of this church, you need Amen. wisdom. Amen. Building program, oh Lord, give me wisdom. Amen. Bills, I need wisdom. I, I need wisdom. Now go over this, Proverbs chapter 11. Oh, let me, let me read, just read these ones real quick. The, the guidance of godly counsel. Amen? Amen. You ever heard of godly counsel? Amen. Okay, where no counsel is, is the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. That's Proverbs 11, verse 14. If you go over to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15, and it says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Proverbs 15, verse 22. Without counsel... Purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Proverbs 19, verse 20. Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in the latter end. Proverbs 20, verse 18. Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice, make war. Uh, Proverbs 21, verse 30. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. Counsel is very, very, very important. And it's so interesting, a multitude of counselors. I, I think some people misunderstand this, uh, but I, I try to find people that are very wise in a certain area. For example, with my child rearing, I looked at Brother David Owens from California, saw them and their 12 kids growing up serving the Lord, four kids in full time service as missionaries. His daughter's married to pastors or assistant pastors. They're living for the Lord. And so I said, okay, a multitude of counsel. In that area right there of child rearing, I'm going to go to him. He's an expert in that area. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. And so I went to that man and asked him his counsel with child rearing and followed that area. Amen. Amen. Now, as far as church, I have gone to a pastor or two and ask them about, for example, soul winning. I wanted to get uh, guidance on how to lead a soul winning church, a church that is ferviently getting out the gospel. Amen. 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 And so I went to a pastor and said, how do you have a church that is hot after souls, that is leading people to Christ? And boy, I got some help there. Uh, I needed some help with finances, finances. So I found an expert in finances and asked him, hey, help me with my finances. And it's important. Counsel is vitally important. I, I think uh, there is a danger, by the way, this is another sermon for another day. Uh, you need some wisdom with uh, a certain area of your life. Should I or shouldn't I? And so I ask uh, Miss Neal, what do you think I should do? John, what do you think I should do? Levi, what do you think I should do? Brother Brian, what do you think I should do? Mrs. Tyndall, what should I do? Brother Gray, what should I do? And all of a sudden, I wait for the one to agree with me. <laughs> well, I'm all to the counselors. There's safety. <laughs> and I think we take that verse out of context. 
And I think it's very important. A multitude of counselors, there is safety. But I want to encourage you, uh, get good, godly counsel. Now, let's go over to Psalm 1. Well, yeah, I'll quote this verse. Oh, the guidance of God's word. Psalm 119, 105. You know this verse, hopefully. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And that's another sermon for another day also. But thy word, whoo, whoo. <laughs> that's excitement, okay? I know you don't get excited that way. You get excited another way, but whoo, glory. Yeah. God's word, it's a lamp unto my feet. Have you ever been there where you shut the door of the Bible on your life and you're just walking around? Oh, oh. used to be younger. <laughs> you know not what you, you, you don't even know what you're stumbling at. And, and it's so important, God, God's word guides us. It's, it's a lamp into our feet. It shows us where we're at. And I've said that here at our church a hundred times, but we need to hear it again and again and again. Sometimes when you open up God's word and it shows you where you're at, that's not a good thing. It shows you're in a bad spot, but it's good to know where you're at. It also is a lamp in our feet and a light into our path that shows us where we're going. Sometimes that's good, sometimes not, that's, that's bad, but when you open it up and it's bad, start changing your trajectory. God's guidance will guide you on the right path. Amen. Amen. Okay, we... Uh, I'm out of breath. I, I wanted a birthday present. And so we had a birthday party last night. Oh, it was good. We had bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. Amen. More brownies. Amen. My, well, my daughter-in-law made brownies that are like sort of good for you. Instead of flour, avocado in there. It, it was good. It was good. It was, it was, Miss Amanda, it was great. It was good. Avocado brownies. So we got to open up the presents, and my top gift, the, the best of the best gift from Mandy and Dan. I mean, it's the last one. And I open it, and you know what it was? A scale. <laughs> so after I'd eaten like 10 pounds of food, let's try this out, Dad. <laughs> it's bad timing. That's not very wise, okay? It's just bad timing. I weighed very heavy, okay? Now, move on. This, this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify this one, but the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. Uh, John 14, verse 23, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. By, by the way, he'll teach you all things. The get, when you, you're, you're in Ephesians chapter 1, you're sealed unto the day of promise. Once you've trusted Christ, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. He's your guide. Wow, what a glorious thing. John chapter 16, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. That's good. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. The natural man can't have that gift of the Holy Spirit, can't be guided by that, doesn't understand the Word of God. And praise God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I want to, and that's a, another, well, like I said, this is a snippet of a sermon, but the Holy Spirit, what a gift. Amen. What a glorious Amen. gift, God. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, how, you, know you, you look at Catholicism, you ever looked at that? And they're praying to Mary. They, they'll take a, that, and the, the, the Catholic guy down the street, I asked them about it. They take that statue where they take the statue of St. Peter and bury it in their mailbox to help them sell under a mailbox to try to, try to sell their house. And I said, do you really do that? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't understand, but it's like they don't see it. It doesn't make sense to them. And uh, they don't understand the scripture. Thou shalt make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is earth beneath. But they don't have the Holy Spirit. So they don't have that guidance of the Holy Spirit. Praise God, you're saved, you do. Amen. Now, there's two Bible examples, and we're done tonight. And the first example of a man in the Bible who did not follow God's guidance is in the Old Testament, a man named Saul. Remember Saul? 
Saul uh, began to drift away from God. And I believe he's a saved man. And biblically, we can look at that. Uh, Samuel said, uh, today you're going to be up here in heaven with me. And, uh, but uh, Saul, as a saved person, he quit following the Lord and began to do what was right in his own eyes. And he began to not follow God. He began to do his own thing. And that, that led him to a place where he wasn't under the guidance of God. He was under the guidance. He was walking and stumbling and problem after problem. The very end, it says in 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13, listen to this. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. He went to a familiar spirit rather than the king of kings and lord of lords. What about us, though? What about us? We're, we're no better than Saul. And if we're not careful, we'll go to a familiar spirit, YouTube. And I'm not all that YouTube's wrong, but it can be if we put it in place of God. And so important for us, first, God. God in everything. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 12 says it another way. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, awake, to the dumb stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. Hello? There's another example, and the same name is Saul, but Saul of the New Testament, who later became Paul. He's on the road to Damascus. He gets gloriously saved, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Remember that verse, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. How did we get to the end where Saul was this missionary, planted churches, led so many people to Christ? Well, it started right after getting saved. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and God began to direct his path. Amen. By the way, it didn't all start very good. Three days without sight, without food, without water. But it was God's will. Amen. By the way, he, he received sight. Ananias touched him, and he received sight. What did he do right away? Did he go get water and food? No, he went and got baptized. Amen. He wanted to do the will of the Lord. Then he, then he received sustenance. But he began to take that path of God's guidance, trusting in the Lord with all his heart. It didn't matter what he wanted. It didn't matter what God wanted. Yes. He began to acknowledge him in all his ways, and God did direct his path. Yes, sir. Amen. Two Saul's. Saul of the Old Testament, eh, terrible end. Saul of the New Testament, glorious end. Yes, sir. Amen. Now we get to choose. We choose which one will be, yes, the Saul of the Old or Saul of the New. Yes, sir. Hey, I want to be the Saul of the New Testament. I want to be Amen. one that, let's quote it, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you.